Same as you. I ran into that monster and escaped down here. Then you guys came. Alright, welcome back to Death Mark. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's continue. Tsukimashou. Alright, so um we have We have these we pick up these things. We don't I don't know where to go. I need to find a place where I can probably use one of these items. I don't know. Can I actually like maybe go back? Can I go back? Maybe go to the other? Well that was quick. Can I go to the other? Other elementary school, do you think? Okay, apart one with him. Okay. Can I go to the other? I can't. Wait, can I? H elementary? Is it the same place? It's the same place. Hmm. Oh, so you can't go to the other school. I thought I can go to the other school maybe to like pick up some items and maybe come back here and use them here instead. But you can't. Alright, I'm just gonna switch back to partners then. Alright, I had to search around. What did I miss? Did I miss anything? Okay, let me just go back to the, um... That hole in the classroom? Huh. Can I use the alert opener here instead? Oh my god, you used it here! Oh my god, I thought so. What is it? Worn out talisman? Oh, that's it, soul power? Oh, that's nothing important. Oh, did I get a key or something? I don't think there's anything else I can search. It has to be that hatch, but I don't know how to open it. Red pen. If I use the red pen, I might be able to pop the handle out. I squat down by the door. My mark bites into my wrist again. It's almost like it's trying to stop me from searching under the floor. Why does it keep doing that? Why does it keep doing that? That's what I said last time. It looks around. Is there something I'm missing? Really? There's something else in here. Better make sure we're paired. But. But I searched everywhere. Looks really old. The corners of the doors are rounded off. I pull on the door, but it just rattles in place. Looks like it won't open. Something's stopping it. Okay, so none of the items I have work. There must be something in here that I'm supposed to like find, I guess. I don't know. I've did everything I can. <laughs> Longer symbol lock. It's just sticking something. What? Looks like the sliding door has a symbol lock just sticking something in the hole for the screw. The key itself seems to have gone missing. I don't see anywhere. What's this? Something stuck in the hole for the screw. It seems that wooden thing works as a lock. I have to do something about that to open the door. What the hell? Okay, so after you choose a command to look right, right, it says something is stuck in hole. It didn't say that before, right? It did not say that before, but it's only after you feel it to know that it's stuck, and then it gives you a different dialogue. Okay, so can I use a tool here now? Uh, something is stuck. Can I use the um, letter opener? Shove it in, maybe pop out whatever is stuck in the hole. That's the idea, at least. But nope, it won't fit at all. The knife is too big. Use something smaller. Uh, pen. I take out the red pen. If I use the pen, I might be able to pop out whatever is stuck in the hole. Are you serious? Oh my god, I've been stuck on this for so long, dude. Wow, you've got skills. What is it? Is it that surprising? Anyway, I need to focus. What is it? Suddenly, the resistance vanishes and the pen pokes all the way through. I put my hand on the door and slide it open without any issues. There's a red tube inside. A flare? A flare? <laughs> What's that for? It's a signal light for emergencies. It's a good idea to always have one in your car. Huh. Okay then. But... Moy picks something up off the floor. It's a thorn, about as long as my pinky finger. That's what was in the hole. 
This is so not a coincidence. I bet he didn't want anyone to have that, so he put a thorn in the hole. Is he scared of this? We both look at the flare again. Do we drop it down the hatch? Huh? What? Why'd you turn off the lights? That wasn't me. I didn't turn it off. It just went off. What was that noise? Hey, mister, what was that noise? Shh, be quiet. It's a struggle to not yell with my nerves on edge. I hit the flashlight again and again. Come on, please. The batteries were just working. I feel like I'm performing CPR on this thing. But finally, was that the rabbit? Got it. What the hell? What is happening? The door behind me warps threateningly. My mark burns in pain. Death is already in the room next door. There's no time and nowhere to run. Calm down. I need to find a way out of this quickly. We're running out of time. Go down the hatch. A way to survive. We've got to hurry. Uh, the hatch, dude. Do it. Um, use the tool. A flare. Huh. Use it. I take out the leather warner and shove it in. I might be able to get the handle out this way. When it touches the metal, my mark scorches me. I stop moving for just a second. But I have to do this. Yes, I got it. I grab the handle and lift up the trapdoor. As I thought, a dark hole leads down under the floor. Get in! I shove Moe into the hole. Then I slide down into the darkness after them. What is that? There's something there. Ugh. I fall unexpectedly far, hitting my back against something. I grit my teeth to stop myself from yelling. Something's shuffling around above my head. If we had stayed there just a few more seconds. I grit my burning wrist with all my might. I must endure the pain for now. Can you turn on the lights already? I can't see anything. I can hear anxious panting. Moe must be right next to me. Are you sure it's her? <laughs> They're shaking so hard. I can see it from the corner of my eye. I brace myself, expecting the trap door to break open any second. But the shuffling noise finally grows distant. Is it okay now? Yeah, I think it's gone. Suddenly, my wrist isn't hurting anymore. Thank God, I thought we were done for this time. Anyway, where are we? What in the world is this room? I'm surprised this place exists beneath the school. Can you turn on the light? Yeah. I cautiously press the switch, being careful not to make any noise. Holy shit! Wow! Wow! Ho! Oh. The scene captured in the light of the flashlight sends shivers down my spine. What? Moe slaps a hand over their mouth. For a few moments, all we can do is stare in silence. A disturbing scene more horrible than anything I've seen before, spreads out before us. Anyone would be shocked by it, especially a kid. I take a deep breath and look closer. There's something twisting around the corpses. It looks like some kind of plant vine. Are those roses? The strangely sharp thorns and the thin red petals. There appears to be real, live roses covering the corpses and carpeting the floor. My vision suddenly grows dim. 
What the hell is this? I see a woman's body trapped by roses. What the hell is this? <laughs> oh, what? Is she is she alive? What what is this? The tragedy that happened in this room. It's as if it's all playing out in my head. I can see it. Roses. What are they doing here? Did someone plant them? Moe's voice brings me back to reality. Yeah. I can't tell them that I saw some waking dream. I scramble to remember the conversation. That's right. I saw the rose vines. Then? Oh, did he get a vision of like the past or something? Holy shit, I thought that was a real body. Yeah, that's got to be it. It's not like they just spring up on their own. But... Why would anyone do that? Did someone decorate the corpses for some kind of reason? Or did they die captured by the roses, like I saw in that vision? Moe screams. What's wrong? S something moved. See, over there. Back in there. No, is something hiding in here? Oh my god. Okay, so this is the only only room. Okay. The bed, the body, so many skeletons. Okay. There's a dried up corpse. The body is twisted in an odd position, as if it's still in pain even now. Uh, okay. Let's look back here then, right? There's a bed with a metal pipe frame. Mattress is completely discolored, stained with something that looks like sweat. Someone must be living here, and for a long time too. Feel it. Oozing dark dirty- ew! Smells like sewage. I slide the mattress over and find a plastic sheet underneath. Vinyl sheet. It's pretty thick. Was it put there to protect from water damage? The top of the sheet is pitch black. At first glance, it looks like it's covered in mold. But when I spread it open, it crunches as dark red flakes fall from it. This is... blood. I can't do anything but whisper, dumbfounded, as I stare at the bloodstained sheet. Something murmurs in my ear, as if in reply. Their blood... Denies him. Part of me takes the voice seriously. I'm clearly hallucinating, but for some reason it calms me down. Still in a daze, I shine the flashlight under the bed. There's something under there? There it is again. S something's there. Moe's voice has gone very shrill. Then... Is it gonna jump out at you? Hey now, give me a break. I'm no monster, you know? I'm just a regular human being. <gasps> Who's talking? Who is it? What the hell? Something slowly climbs out from under the bed. It's a man in a trench coat. A, a person? What were you doing under there? The man looks bored. He scoffs. Same as you. I ran into that monster and escaped down here. Then you guys came. The man turns his back to us and jerks his chin. Anyway, I was hiding over there. His answer is believable enough. But why is he at this school to begin with? His presence raises a lot of questions. The man tilts his head a bit and peers at me. Then he snorts. It seems he's seen through me. You don't look like you believe me. Yes, that's only natural. I haven't told you everything either. I could, but... The man looks around at his feet. We better get out of here first. We shouldn't chat at the crime scene. I think you're right. Moi seems to feel the same way. Let's head back for now. 
You have somewhere to go back to. Good. Then let's get going. The man put his hand on the ladder. He pauses and turns to us. The name's Satoru Mashita. I'm an ex-detective. Forgot to mention that. A man named Mashita disappeared up the ladder. We follow him back up to the first floor. But when we emerged, he's not there. What? Hey, take a look at this. Mashita's calling to us from down the hallway. He is quick. He's a... What? <laughs> Was it like this when you guys came through? Moi pipes up, voice slightly wobbly. No, it wasn't. It wasn't like this at all. Holy shit! What happened here? Something's creeping along the hallway. They're rose vines. Thought so. I didn't see them before either. But Mark's color grows more vivid. Early dawn, a few hours left until death closes in. What? Oh man, is he gonna be become like a, a partner? That guy? Some people naturally put others on guard, even if there's no particular ill will between them. That's exactly the type of person Mashita is. Oh, you got some nice stuff here. The moment he climbs in the car, he makes a grab for my bag. Then he starts inspecting all my stuff. I wasn't planning on keeping a constant eye on him, but he's making it very hard not to. Moe seems like the type to stick her nose in everything, but she's suspiciously silent, as if exhausted. Are you okay, Moe? Huh? Oh, oh, yeah, just zoning out, you know? I'm fine. She doesn't look fine, but... My other passenger is more of a concern right now. So, were you at the school because you were investigating something? I'm not on the force anymore, just poking around for my own reasons. Something I wanted to check. I don't doubt what he says, but... That would mean he entered the school illegally. What were you... Let me ask one thing first. Mashita interrupts my question and points to my arm. He notices the mark. Does that hurt? It didn't take him long to spot the mark on my wrist. Sometimes, it hurts the most whenever I'm in danger. Huh, is that so? Mashita leans back in his seat, satisfied. I was investigating some missing people. Guess he's responding to my question now. That school came up in a number of missing persons cases. Each one has some affiliation with each elementary before they disappeared. Teachers, workers, people in the PTA, students, and their family members. I was looking for them. Then, Moe speaks up from the back seat. Were those people... the corpses down there? She doesn't sound as energetic as she usually does. Did something happen after all? Is her mark... Mashita doesn't reply. Maybe he thinks the answer is obvious, or maybe replying to a kid isn't worth his time. But something bugs me about what he just said. If the school was clearly suspicious, then... Of course I brought it up with my superiors. All I got for it was... He continues before I can ask, making a slashing motion across his neck. You got fired, huh? Disciplinary discharge. Something about sexually harassing a subordinate. That principal's gotta have some kind of political pull. I probably dug up something he didn't want getting out. 
That wasn't my plan. I never meant to uncover anything dirty. True, the school did have that suspicious room. It's not that strange to think it would come up in some missing persons cases. That would be common sense, at least. But common sense is for the world of the living. A spirit might have something to do with those cases. There's an awkward silence. In that sense, this isn't even a case anymore, is it? Mashita sighs deeply. Who would believe it? Who would believe that there's a monster in that school killing people? It's personal now. Our problem, and we're on our own. He turns his wrist over and shows it to me. He has a mark too? On his skin is the familiar mark. I see. You, too. Yeah, I sensed it as soon as I saw yours. I had a feeling this be a problem. We're in the same boat, you and I. He has good instincts. We should talk more when we get back. At Kujo Mansion, there's some... I stopped myself from finishing my sentence. I shouldn't mention that for now. In any case, once we get back, we'll give you more details. Yeah. I'm sure that'll help him a bunch. But Mashita scoffs. Help, huh? You're underestimating me. Holy shit! I think they're cut from the same cloth, right? The main character and that ex-detective, right? They're both detectives. That's pretty cool. When I get out of the car, someone's there to greet me. Welcome back, mister. You too, Miss Moy. I'm glad you're unharmed. Did you find any clues about the spirit? What? So there are others. This is everyone. Huh, what a reliable group you've got. The sarcasm is practically drifting off his words. So, are you all planning on continuing to search for that key, or whatever it is? We don't have anything else to go on. There's no other choice. I don't understand you. If the source of the mark is a spirit, it would be best to destroy the source, don't you think? What do you mean? The spirit is this. So all you have to do is kill it. Are you serious? Of course he's serious. He doesn't exactly look like the choking type. Even if we managed to kill it, would that really make the mark disappear? When I consider everything Mary's told me, it doesn't seem like it worked that way. Even assuming it did, we have more of a fundamental problem. And how do you plan to kill it? I'll figure something out. If something exists, there's logically a way to destroy it as well. Claims he can kill the spirit, yet he doesn't even know how he'll do it. Where does all that confidence come from? Don't forget, I faced him once already. If we're seriously thinking of killing him, Mashita grabs his wrist. That little shit shot some kind of thorns at me from a distance. They hit hard enough to stick in concrete. There's no way to get in close to him. We have to make that a priority. Mashita pulls something out of the heel of his shoe and tosses it at me. It's a thorn curved like a fang. The only reason I'm still breathing is because I was lucky. It won't happen next time. We need a plan. As we head to the entrance, I tell Mashita about Kujo Mansion. He takes it all in silently. Even bringing up the talking doll or Sai Kujo's death doesn't trigger a reaction. Is he so unnervingly calm because he's already dealt with the supernatural? 
We reach the main hall, which is warmly lit. This is a strange mansion. For some reason, I feel like I've come home. Acclimatization is kind of terrifying. That man is a mark bearer too, I see. Would you make the introductions? I update Mary on our investigation and a strange way we met Mashita. The mirror, the underground room full of corpses, the sudden appearances of roses. I really hate to admit it, but it's clear something supernatural is at work here. And the spirit that caused all of it, Anahiko. There's no doubt that Hanahiko is the one who put the mark on Mashita's arm too. But... What kind of chance do we have against a monster that can do that? Mashita says we should kill him. But is that even possible? Hey, Yashiki. My train of thought is interrupted. Mashita's holding a leather-bound notebook out toward me. Read this. I picked it up in that underground room. It was caught up in a bunch of those rose vines when I found it. It was pretty hard to get loose. Did you read it? I skimmed through a bit. It's got some interesting stuff. That's what he says, but he's not smiling at all. His eyes simmer with a quiet anger. Dark red marks stain the cover. I have a bad feeling, but I flip through it. Rose petals fall as they become unstuck from the pages. The notes within are very detailed. The author was intelligent and well-written. Reading through, it dawns on me that this was written by each elementary's principal. The austere, meticulous letters on each page tell a ghastly story. Records of a young, adopted boy's tutoring sessions. The first note is from five years ago. It seems the boy adopted by the principal was small and exceedingly cute. He enjoyed wearing skirts and makeup too. There was no denying that they truly suited a dainty, red-cheeked boy like him. But the principal had a hard time accepting such fancies. Bad habits must be corrected young to promote sound mental health, he thought. So he called it tutoring as a cover for his warped desires. It took place in the underground room. Too many prying eyes anywhere else. There was no safer place than a school at night once all the teachers had left. The principal stayed behind under the pretense of keeping watch, then tutored. He was a highly respected teacher. He even made appearances on TV. There was no reason to be suspicious. The only one who noticed anything strange was the boy's homeroom teacher. But she feared the principal's power and firmly kept her mouth shut. As the note continue, they are more and more deranged. They paint a horrible picture. It is of a totally distorted parent and child. My child gets weaker after every session. His delicate frame has grown thinner and his red cheeks are now darkened. His appearance is described in detail, but there is no malice or hatred. There's just fanatical sincerity, his pride as an educator and a terrifying, smothering love. It continues like that to the very last page. There's no mention of what became of the principal and the boy, but going by the current state of each elementary, I can hazard a guess. You don't look so well, mister. What was in that notebook? Tsukasa peers up at me, he and the boy in the notebook are about the same age. This isn't stuff you share with a kid. I better just sum up the main points for him. That's terrible. We children are always the victims of egos of adults.
stupid grown-ups are irredeemable. Why he say that makes sense. Revolting evil of the adults and the poor boy who became a victim. But is that really the end? If Hanahiko and the boy in the notebook are connected, then the boy turned into a monster. Is that even possible? Alright, you know what? I think I'm in this one here for today. Holy shit, man. So that notebook is definitely talking about Hanahiko, right? It's definitely talking about him. And Mashita seems like a cool guy, right? He seems like a cool guy, but he's also suspicious. I don't know. There's some crazy stuff going on here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you're awesome. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you in the next one. Matan.